all the Esper commander options, Marnius Kalagar is one of the more expensive ones, but he has this very unique theme. The core ability is the Master Tactician. Whenever one or more tokens enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. And then he has a secondary activated ability, Chapter Master. Six mana, colorless, create two white Astartes warrior kitchen tokens with vigilance. And if you activate this six man ability, you will get to draw a card. And then he has like double strike, three, five Astartes warrior for black, blue, white, and two generic, basically five uh, mana. But it doesn't really matter where those tokens are coming from and what kind of tokens they are, as long as they are tokens. So if you have something like a smothering tide in play, then wow, value. Basically, whenever one of your opponents are drawing a card and they don't pay the two mana, you get to draw a card and create a treasure token. That means that we can suddenly look at some really weird cards like this, Black Market Connections. Three mana cost black and two generic, you don't really see this in CDH that much. Enchantment, at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, choose one or more. S uh, sell Contraband, create a treasure token, you lose one life. Buy information, draw a card, you lose two life. Hire mercenary, create a free two colors shapeshifter creature token with chaseling, and you lose three life. The thing here is that Marnius will trigger on the two different instances of black market connections. So in this case, if you choose everything, you lose six life, you will create a treasure token, you will draw three cards and create a free two colorless shapeshifter creature took in with the uh, yeah all the stuff now without marnius it's an okay card it's not a dead card inside your deck because it's free mana pay two life draw a card and pay free life draw a card create a treasure token it's like a very bad phyrixian arena so if you don't have your marnius in play yeah it's okay but there is a risk that you're starting to include a bunch of cards inside your deck they're just gonna be so synergetic with your commander Marnius that you might run into a trap. In the end he is a 5 CMC commander, quite expensive. And sure we do have fast mana like Soul Ring and Jeweled Lotus to help us get him into play. But there are absolute scenarios where we don't get him into play and we have to play without the commander. And if you're overloading your deck with cards that are producing tokens somehow just because you want to synergize with your commander, then there is a risk that you're sitting with a bunch of dead cards in your hand and in play and you aren't really getting anywhere until you get your commander to play and then boom, someone swords to plowshare commander or mana drain the commander or get rid of the commander somehow or maybe a Dranite Magistrate. I mean, Dranite Magistrate is quite common. Or maybe someone just gilded drakes your commander. Never seen that one happen before. So you need to be able to play a very good game without your commander as well, especially when it comes into play at a 5 mana cost. Don't worry though, we're playing the Consult Passus Oracle. Never seen that one before. Demir Colors, it's great. We also have a really strong card drawing package in form of a Mystic Remora, Rhystic Study and Esper Sentinel. The best black tutors in the game. We're playing Necropotence. Praetor's Grasp to steal one of your opponent's key cards or steal an Unduel Breach or steal an Fasus Oracle of various sorts. And Odd Nauseum. The CMC cost of this deck in general is pretty low. So with this you're able to dig through your deck quite efficiently until you get your key pieces and then form a win con with your Ad Nauseum after filling your hand with a bunch of cards. However, we are playing a quite exp a really expensive card Hull Breaker Horror. Now, if you're able to achieve infinite colorless mana, doesn't have to be colored mana, but infinite col mana of any color, then with something like Hull Breaker Horror and fast mana rocks like Soul Ring and Mana Crypt, you can cast your Soul Ring, trigger Hull Breaker Horror, return your Mana Crypt back to your hand, and then tap Soul Ring for mana. Cast Mana Crypt, trigger Hull Breaker Horror, and return Soul Ring back to your hand and repeat this loop for infinite colorless mana. And then basically just activate your commander infinitely. Nice. We can do a very similar thing with Dramatic Reversal and Isochron Scepter. Tap all of your mana rocks, tap 
Isochron Scepter, activate it and cause a dramatic reversal from it and untap everything including the Scepter and boom you have infinite mana and you can draw your entire deck with your commander. And once you've drawn your entire deck you can win the game with Fasus Oracle that we could also win the game with without the commander with the Tainted Pact and Consult. But if I'm gonna be completely honest at this point, once you have infinite mana and infinite cadre, your wing con could be anything. It's just that you are already on the Demir Color Identities for Fasa's Consult. So yeah, it's a perfect out to include just to begin with. So once you have infinite mana, just go that route and you don't need to include more finishers. What I really like about Marnius is his ability to draw a whole bunch of cards for various strange cards that are actually quite good inside this format. Well, Ursa Saga can create a construct and that will trigger a card draw for only two mana and you can do it twice and that will also actually make you a really big army eventually. I personally really like Grim Hireling. It's a really good card in general. It's like a value card that gives you treasures but it can also sit and kill creatures that you need to get rid with of. So if there are value creatures your opponents have or haters you need to get rid of then it will work perfectly for you. But if you don't have anything like that, then it is still going to trigger effects. It's still going to trigger card draw for you when you create treasures with a Grim Hireling, or you can just create treasures to use those to cast your really big expensive spells too. If you wanna see this game in action, Pontus have actually played it a few times on our other channel, the CDHTV Gameplay channel. Link in the description below of the video. And the deck list Pontus is playing is also, of course, in the description below of the video if you want to take a look at how you could potentially build Marnius card by card. Here we have 27 lands, 6 enchantments, very key, important how to include enchantments, 16 artifacts, 28 instants, 9 sorceries, and 13 creatures. No planeswalkers. You can play a whole big mix of flying beaters like Sarah Ascendant. Because one thing I would like to emphasize here is that Marnius is actually pretty big. He punches quite hard, but also you're creating tokens here and there from various effects. For example, I have seen Ursa Saga create huge constructs. Your black market connection could create a whole big army. And Marnius himself is actually creating two two twos. And if you're not winning with the thing, it's a seven eight. And Phantasmal Image could become an opponent's Krom or an opponent's really big commander that could also punch face. So you actually have a pretty decent plan B in form of beatdown with this deck. And depending on how you actually build him, it can be more on that beatdown plan, depending on what form of tokens you're including. But remember the trap I talked about in the beginning of the video? You don't want to include cards that will be only good when you have your commander in play. You want to have cards that are like, they're gonna function on their own, you don't have to have your commander, and you're still gonna have a good, decent game overall. Because once again, guys, remember, it's a 5 mana cost commander. He is actually quite expensive. It's a very unique game playing experience where you want to put strange cards into play that produce tokens for you for more cool value. I hope you enjoyed the deck tech video and a short tutorial on how to think and how to build him. It is far from one of the best commanders in the game but he's definitely doing some cool stuff. In any case thank you so much for watching and take care. I'll see you guys in the next video.